There are two types of riders in the world. One, who love classic manual transmission scooters. And type two, they absolutely hate them. Now, if you are the latter type, this video is not really for you. What I have in front of me is my Vespa PX200. It's a 2002 model. Now, PX200 was one of the most powerful two-stroke manual transmission Vespas produced by uh, Vespa. Only other Vespa that probably produced a bit more power was Rally 200, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but um, as far as classic scooters goes, this was one of the most powerful models produced by Vespa. I'll quickly go over the controls. That's the accelerator, front brake, horn, headlight switch, so that's off, uh, parking lights, or no, well, not the parking lights really, the smaller lights, headlights, low beam, high beam, indicator, clutch, that's the gear, so you change the gear by rotating the whole uh, left hand shaft, uh, it's in neutral right now. First, second, third, and fourth. So it's got four gears. So that's so that's second gear, first gear, neutral, third, and fourth. That's how you change the gears, and you have to know how to ride a manual before you can actually enjoy um, a PX200 or any classic scooter with manual transmission. That's the speedometer, uh, fuel gauge, low fuel warning indicator light high beam um, and that light turns on whenever you turn the headlight on um, some american models have a neutral light but you know that's for america then i don't know why they need a neutral um, indicator here and a light as well but anyway that's the rear brake oh also this model has a self-starter so that's the starting button so you have to press the clutch and press the self-starter to start the bike uh, or the scooter. Um, it, it is post-2000 model, so it has got a um, disc brake. So that's the disc brake there. That's the disc brake reservoir. Interestingly enough, um, the disc brake, it has braided lines and the brake is axial mounted like super sports or sports bikes, which it sounds funny but it does actually stop the scooter very well 10 inch front wheels uh, 3.5 inch by 10 inch that's the size single sided swing arm like typical classic vespas now it, it does create balance issues at higher speeds but anyway that's not the point really front glove box so I've got, as usual, I've got some two-stroke oil, a lock, and a few things like that. Now, unlike modern scooters, it doesn't have any underseat storage. As you can see, it's got the fuel tank there. That's the oil tank, and that's an electrical line for measuring the fuel. That's where you put fuel. Uh, these two latches open the left and right side covers. I'll get to that in a sec. That's the choke. That's for the fuel line, uh, fuel off on switch. So that's on at the moment and that's off. Some older, older Vespas had off, on and, the, and this was reserved. But this one doesn't have a reserve because the Vespa has a fuel level indicator um, thing it doesn't really need to show you reserve but however it does have a low fuel indicator light as well I'll open the latches and show you the engine So that's the Kickstarter. Now this Vespa has an aftermarket expansion pipe um, which gives it slightly better performance but the engine is absolutely stock so I've installed the um, exhaust, the better exhaust pipe or I 
free-flowing exhaust pipe and up-jetted the carburetor but other than that it's a stock engine that's the flywheel that's the CDI and that's the spark plug there underneath this box it has the air filter and the carburetor the air comes from here goes that the whole body of the scooter basically forms the air box and then it travels through this pipe into that box where it has the carburetor and the air filter as well that's the two-stroke oil line it's good to check it from time to time now because the scooter has auto lube um, all you have to do is fill up the uh, tank or oil tank with two-stroke oil it holds about uh, just over a liter of oil and which lasts just about a thousand kilometers uh, when the oil level gets low you can see a little bubble here and that's the time to refill personally I refill every three four hundred kilometers and it's good to check the oil line from time to time just to see if there are any air bubbles or anything or if there are any leaks because if you don't and if the oil pump isn't working properly you, you there's a risk that you'll end up running the engine without any engine oil and that will seize the engine as well that's the kickstarter that's the gear change box so the gear cables connect to this box which has got a pivoting mechanism in here and that basically changes the gear that basically pushes the gear shaft uh, there's a cruciform there and that changes gear won't go into the technical details now I'll open the other side Now, most Vespers, including this one, has a spare wheel, but because I fit in an after aftermarket exhaust, which is left-hand side exhaust as well, I couldn't fit the spare wheel because the wheel ends up hitting the exhaust. But uh, if I refit the normal exhaust, I can easily fit the wheel here. That's the battery for the self-starter. The battery is only used for self-starter and the horn, and that's about it. So it's got li very little use. You can remove the battery and you can run the scooter fine without any issues. The only problem is the horn will be really low. I'll start up the scooter in a sec. Time to start the scooter. So fuel line is on. I won't need to pull the choke because the engine is already warm. Turn the ignition on now. To start with the self-starter, I have to press the clutch, which I can't do right now because I'm holding the phone. I'll simply kick start. It's slightly louder than a stock scooter because it's got the expansion chamber. There is a metallic noise coming from the aftermarket exhaust. I don't think you can see but there is a bit of two stroke smoke coming out of the exhaust which is normal don't see any smoke then that's a worry so how is it to write well absolutely brilliant I would say um, as I say there are two types of people some will hate it I personally absolutely love riding the scooter I've also got a PX150 with a Malosi kit in it and that goes much faster however for cruising this is one of the best one of the best manual transmission two-stroke scooters you can buy um, stops very well it's got very good gearing great for the city even good for speeds up to I would say 90 kilometers an hour it will do 100 just over 100 maybe 105 or 6 um, 110 with a bit of tailwind but that's about it it's not really meant to go fast having said that it is a lot of fun 
very easy to do wheelies because it's got a lot of low end torque. Um, you can fit Malosi 210 kits, Malosi 221 kits as well with longer crankshafts and all that and then it will easily do 130 even 140 kilometers an hour but I haven't bothered doing any of that simply because I've got a PX150 with a Malosi kit and that's got a Malosi 177 aluminium kit now um, to sum it up it, it's it's either you like it or you don't I've got I've got motorcycles as well and friends often ask me why do you ride this crap I'm like like you don't understand you either get it or you don't um, I don't compare it with a motorcycle it's not a motorcycle um, it's not even close to a motorcycle the the charm and the joy of riding a classic manual scooter and even going slow can be a lot of fun on these things um, uh, how, the, how does it compare to a PX125 and or 150? Well, it's it's much better than a P, stock PX150. It goes much faster. Not, not only faster, it's a, it's got better acceleration and smoother torque curve. I would say um, we I can't really compare it with my PX150 because that's got a Malosi kit in it. But um, compared to a stock PX125 or 150, the PX200 is way better. After putting the aftermarket exhaust, it does uh, go a little bit faster. I, I personally don't recommend everyone doing it until you, un, unless you know what you're doing. Because you can't just slap in an exhaust, you have to object, object the carburetor, look at the fuel flow and all that. A lot of people remove the auto loop as well and just move to pre-mix because then there is no chance of auto loop failing but having said that auto loop is very reliable on stock scooters if you modify them then that's a different story all right guys thanks for watching the video if you have to add something else please write in the comment section